Lie, Cheat, and Steal, the podcast about liars, frauds, thieves, and bullshitters. I'm your host, Pat Soroyce. Just to let you guys know, we are a bi-monthly podcast. It's available on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher. If you haven't already, please give us a five-star review on whatever platform you're listening to us on, and leave, leave a short review. That actually helps get the word out. It's one of the best ways to support the show. We also release two more episodes every month on our Patreon. So if you like what you hear, go to patreon.com slash lie, cheat, and steal. This month, we have two great episodes out. One about the three-year cruise. You saw that in the news about people who sold their life savings and going to three-year cruise for a company that had no boat. That's a really good one. Also, we cover the wild story of James Hogue, an academic impersonator who slipped into Ivy League universities all while running from the cops. That's also a great episode. You can find us on our social medias. We're on TikTok and Instagram at Lie, Cheat, Steal Podcast. And we are on YouTube at Lie, Cheat, and Steal. That being said, we are here in the Comedy Frequency Studio broadcasting live here with my co-host, Kath Barbadoro. How you doing? Hi, Pat. We're not live. We're not live. It's <laughs> We're live. Yeah, we're live. We're talking yeah. to each other live. Yeah. Man. You know, no, guys, this is we're happening actually, right now, guys. This we're is actually like, like three weeks in the past, I think. We're three weeks uh, in the past. What? Well, yeah, guys, please change course for the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, Hopefully March seventh is is uh, you know a better world that you guys are yeah. living in when this when this comes out. Uh, well, I wanted to, I wanted to mention when this was coming out because we're both um, in a in a streak that may have ended by the time oh, this yeah, comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Pat and I are both uh, not drinking right now. Yeah, and uh, pretty pretty proud of ourselves. Um, we're feeling pretty yeah, we're feeling so, pretty hot. Right. I feel like neither one of us had like a, a problem or anything, but we both just sort of de- decided to experiment with stopping. And yeah. uh, how do you feel about it so far? I feel I feel fucking fantastic. Uh, I'm at day 17. Um, nice. And so, yeah, like I so I my a big part of me was uh, I with my new job. Uh, I'm off the road. I'm working regular ass job again. And I'm working. I leave at 430 in the morning, to go to work every day. Uh, and mm. so that like a lot of times I just wouldn't go out and do shows. I was like, Oh, if I go out and do shows, yeah. I'm going to drink. And I had this wild idea. I was like, what well, do you just don't drink and go do the shows? Yeah. And like yeah. the only way I can really pull that off is if I'm just not drinking. And so I went yeah. on tour. I was in South Dakota last month. I did shows in South Dakota, North Dakota and Nebraska had a blast, uh, played breweries, got hammered every night it was fun and then i had a three-day head start because we drove back from south dakota and then i stayed in chicago for two nights before flying back and like i don't know i was like well i'm already three days ahead or four days ahead at that point and so i was like let's see what it, we see what we do so it's uh sober february uh nice. <laughs> yeah just raw dog in february raw dog in black history month and uh just go <laughs> 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 yeah just uh, yeah ready to atone um but no, it's it's been good. I feel great. I'm getting up like for work, feeling like early. I've been getting up before my alarm. Uh, yeah. Energy level really through the roof. Uh, one thing that you had pointed out that I I never thought about this is when you're like you you go to a social gathering, you drink to relax. But like I like to drink, and like a big part if I'm drinking at a social function, I'm like always shaking my beer, being like, where am I at? Where am I at? You know what I'm saying? Let me get another one real quick. I'll if I have half a beer, I might just be like, well, fuck, let's just chug that. Go get another one. And it's like almost mm-hmm. like you have a whole other stressful thing to keep up with. And I didn't really realize <laughs> that I was. I don't know if I was struggling with that, but that it was like something that was like actually stopping me from being in the moment or engaging or having fun. And like I'd, I'd find myself if I was out in public, I was at a bar, I was at the bar a lot of times. Like I'm gonna get a drink real quick, and you're just, you know. You're away from the table, and I've noticed it's actually I feel more in the moment. I feel like I'm actually hanging mm-hmm. out with my friends and experiencing what's happening. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, yeah, I feel I like, like my my like version of that was um, for me, it's like if I'm in a bar, I'm drinking at the same rate, and the only difference is how long I'm at the bar. Like yeah. that, <laughs> I I'm not like a crazy like I, I I don't like I'm not like a fast drinker or whatever, but it's like okay, I probably have one every 45 minutes or so. So yeah. like, it it was just sort of like, a, well, if I'm out at the bar, that's how many drinks I'm going to have. And it's yeah. like, you can actually just go to a bar. Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, don't yeah. Need, <laughs> you don't need to do that. Like, yeah, um, yeah I feel like it just wasn't, um, I, I had stopped for sort of the same reason. I One of my goals this year is to be um, more social and like go out more and and sort of strengthen. I have a lot of like wonderful friendly acquaintances in New York and I would really like to make some of those people into better friends. Yeah. And I can't do that with a full-time job and go out and every time I want to go out and be social, I can't do all that and drink. Like it just yeah. doesn't 
because then I won't go out because I have to factor in having a hangover the next day. That's and exactly then it's like what I've been another doing, yeah. another disincentive to go hang out with people. It's like, well, I'm gonna be tired. I'm gonna feel shitty tomorrow. It's like I need more incentives to go out and see people, not not disincentives. Yeah. So like that was sort of what I was thinking, and uh, yeah, I've um I I decided like I'm not not drinking, but uh, I I just want to like actively choose when I want to drink and not just do it as a default. And so far I've drank twice in 2024 and it's been fine. I haven't missed it. Yeah. I have been. So right now I'm dealing with this back injury, which like, I feel like I've been talking about forever. Cause I've had to do like six podcasts, since it happened. <laughs> but uh, I'm so bored. And like, so uh, cause I can't do anything. I'm like, I'm just lying around. Yeah. And I feel like if I had not made this sort of deal with myself, I would probably be drinking Yeah. because it's just like, number one it helps with the pain and number two i'm so bored yeah and like <laughs> that would have sucked i don't want to drink in my house and lie around in bed so like yeah i'm uh thumbs up give it if you're curious about not drinking you might find you don't miss it as much as you think you would i, I it really has not been as hard as i anticipated yeah that's that, that's one of the crazy things like there's been times in my life where it's been harder i i like like to quit i've got the longest i've ever gone was 21 days i went 21 okay. days one time and then uh, I, I was watching, it was like, like the last time the Cowboys were in the playoffs, I think, one mm -hmm. of the last times. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> and so I, I, remember I was talking with Chris Tellez, and I was like, we were living together at the time. I was like, if the Cowboys win, I'm drinking tonight. And they didn't win, and I still drank. And so that was 21 days. Yeah. <laughs> that was that. was that. And then so, You can definitely beat that this time. Yeah, I, I can beat that. I, you're yeah. totally set up. I'm on day 17, that. but yeah, the thing is, is I think it's because just lifestyle change. I'm older this time. I have... A yeah. reason to go home every morning. I got because I go home every night. I got to get up early as hell. And like you said, you, you're you're kind of it's kind of a little scary how much you don't miss it. I saw Avery Moore at a Super Bowl party, friend of the show, Avery Moore, and she's been sober for I think coming up on a year now, and she's doing fucking fantastic, mm -hmm. and I'm super yeah. happy for her. And I was telling her that I was like, it's a little kind of scary because you're like, well, if I don't want to drink, what do I? What am I doing? You know, what I'm because it's such a big part of going out. <laughs> was just right and you're also like why was i doing that all this yeah time? why was like, i doing that and what was uh yeah <laughs> i, I gonna... didn't need to do that yeah like, <laughs> it's i know obviously for some people it is very difficult but it's just sort of like why was i doing this thing that like it's fun i like being drunk it yeah. is like very fun but uh I didn't need to be doing it. Yeah. It's not like not good for you. Like yeah. why do it? I, I was like I we hang out with comedians and like I'm not saying other people aren't funny, but comedians are funny. And I love drinking and riffing where you just got this weird yeah. joke going and everybody's like chiming in. It's a great thing. It's some of my fondest memories, but like yeah, like I look back and I'm like, I, I didn't really need to do that, you know? I could have just laughed with my friends. I could have just laughed really with my friends. Be. Yeah. I was at Super Bowl party the other night. I it was a little when I first got there, I was like, shit, man, I really want a beer because it's like, you know, we're it'd be fun to crack a cold one right now. Right, so yeah. yeah, I drank two liquid deaths, and after I did that, also I smoked a bunch of weed, and then I was just like, all right, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we should clarify. We are not sober. Oh, yeah, uh, no, no, by any means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still very stoned. <laughs> but uh yeah, I don't know. It's uh it's it's not that bad. And the um, health benefits just like like I I burn like today I think uh before I left work I was already I think I burned 2700 calories at work. Mm -hmm. And like I yeah. would but when I get off work and then when you just down nine Modellos, you know what I'm saying? It's like you really just right. like, you completely almost offset it entirely. <laughs> and so like now I'm like getting off and I'm starting to feel like, you know, like my pants are sliding off my ass. Like I'm, 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 you know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, not the worst feeling. You feel good. You, you look good. And, uh, somebody said I had, my skin looked good the other day and I was like, well, thank you. There you go. Yeah. yeah that's great. <laughs> um, well, I'm trying to think of a segue here. I don't know if I have one. Uh, well, here's one, you know, I like a cocktail, yeah. right? I've talked about how I like a cocktail on this, uh, podcast. My favorite way to drink a cocktail is on the rocks. That's on the what rocks. I like. And uh, today we're going to be talking about a pioneer in the ice industry. Oh, so okay. That's what we're talking about today. Do you like my? <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, on the rocks, frozen water. It's the one thing they're not making anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparent. Like I, I knew this, but it was so interesting to learn about. Ice used to be a very hot commodity. Pre, yeah. Pardon the pun, but it was a hot commodity. It really was. Um, yeah, you could make a lot of money in it. And the guy that we're going to be talking about today made a lot of money in it. Um, so obviously this is a historical one. Um, you hit us with the history yeah. episodes uh, lately. Man. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. I, the last two, they've been, I was sort of like, I can't believe we haven't talked about this guy before. Um, so 
part of how I found this, something I've been doing lately, if you, uh, you know, this, uh, if you want to crack the code of how I pick my things, I've been putting in like the name of a place and then like scam con man. Uh, I've done, I've done that. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I've been thinking about Maine a lot lately. I, for various reasons, I grew up near Maine. It's very beautiful to me. It's also very, I just find it very interesting. I've talked about this on the show before the top quarter of it. There's like nothing in it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all uninhabited. Um, yeah. It's forest and it's all privately owned by paper companies. And so I'm just like super interested in what the hell goes on up there. Yeah, my, and, uh, my this is something that went on up there. My mama was born in Fort Kent, Maine. Uh, like a, mm -hmm. a lot of my family's from Maine, but so far north, she didn't speak English until she was in her like 20s and she was born yeah, in America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, and it's still like that up yeah. there. Like it's really, it's really interesting. It's beautiful too. It's gorgeous up there. Um, but yeah, so this guy is from Maine and this story is from a website called Neander Maine and it's called, uh, the story is called the ice King of Bath. Uh, weirdly, this doesn't have an author on, um, the article, but it does cite a book called Bath Maine's Charlie Morse ice King and wall street scoundrel. And it's by Philip Wood. Um, so yeah, this, uh, Neander Maine website, they had a great article. I also like looked at Wikipedia and did some other research, but yeah, that's where most of this comes from. Yeah, so this guy, his name is Charles Morse, Charlie Morse, uh, we're going to be talking about today, and he is a Maine, a Maine native, so... What, we'll do do they call it Mainers? Is it, am, I, am I imagining Mainers, that? Yeah. Mainers, they call it Mainers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maine. He's a Mainer. Yep. So, uh, he was born in 1856 in Bath, where he grew up, and uh, he... This is a fun fact. I, this was not corroborated but i did see it listed a few places so he when he was born um he i they say he had infantile paralysis i think this is probably like a something like cerebral palsy type thing where like when he was born yeah. something happened um so he had a he he walked with a limp and in his later years he wore a top hat and had a cane and people say that he inspired the Monopoly Man. Ooh, that is based on his appearance. All right. I don't know I, if that's true, but <laughs> envision the Monopoly Man doing all of this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My half, and also, oh, he had Monopolies, which we'll talk yeah, about. Yeah, oh, cool. So, yeah, so he's li living the character. <laughs> uh, when I'm, I don't do it much in the city. When I'm on the road, I have a whole joke about... Uh, Dressing my dick up to look like the Monopoly Man. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. If, if for the purposes of sexting. It's a fun bit. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you got your like your city bits and your road bits. Road bits, like, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I know, I know what them. these guys want. They're fun in their yeah, own. These, way. Yeah, these dudes work 50 hours this week. Let's talk about how I dress my dick up to look like a Monopoly guy yeah. so I can sex the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Which purely <laughs> fantasy. Purely <laughs> fantasy, by the way. <laughs> So anyway, this guy, uh, the Monopoly man, um, he, his father owned a marine towing business. Again, this is the part of Maine where like um, there are no roads, so most of your transport is on rivers. Yeah. Um, so that's how they, all the logging up there, that's how they used to do it. They would just float the logs down the river to the sawmill. Um, yeah, Stuff man. like that. So like that's what his dad did basically. And this was on the Kennebec River in Maine. Um, and he hired his son to, uh, keep the books. And that's when Charlie Morris sort of did his, ran his first kind of hustle and he outsourced the job to somebody else for a third of his pay and then pocketed <laughs> the difference. So, oh man, knew what was up. A right man after our hearts, you know? man. <laughs> <laughs> Some real Tom Sawyer painting the fence. Yeah. yeah. Shit, you know? <laughs> So um, then he went to Bowdoin, which is a college up there. And uh, somehow while he was at Bowdoin, he was already sort of getting into the business. Um, so his dad worked on the Kennebec River. The Kennebec River at this point had become sort of the ice capital of the Northeast because it's so cold up there. Yeah. Um, the river freezes and the water is very pure. And so that's where um, most of the ice companies Ooh, were man. located. I bet that is a, that's a nice glass of water, dog. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's what Poland Spring is supposed to be, I think, yeah. is from up there. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, crisp. <laughs> crisp. So crisp. So while he's at Bowdoin, he negotiates uh, some contracts to ship uh, river ice down to New York City. So um, there are like all these lumber ships going down there. So he's like basically just like buying space on a ship that's already going down to, to sell some ice. So he's like getting into the ice game, you know? Yeah. And uh, Walter White. As I, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like Walter White. <laughs> 
as I said, Maine was um, sort of the northeastern capital uh, for ice. Uh, by the late 1800s, they were exporting about a million tons of ice yearly. Um, in 1891, there were 42 ice houses on the Kennebec River. 25,000 people worked in this industry in Maine, um, and they would they basically would cut ice in the winter and then store them in insulated, um, you know, like shacks, yeah. and then ship them down, uh, you know, periodically. So um, after college, Charles Morse uh, establishes the Charles W. Morse & Co. Shipping and Ship Brokering Firm in New York City. And this is like where he's based out of for um, the, the foreseeable future. He moves to New yeah. York City. And um, I've heard if he can make it there, he, he can make it anywhere. Well, it was a really good place to sell ice because they bought 25% of all of the ice in the country. At the yeah. So <laughs> They're hot. you got ice to sell, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go to the Big Apple. Hell you yeah. Know? Did you ever, uh, we, I know you've traveled in Europe before. Uh, did you ever notice mm -hmm. that how like, or I maybe mean, it's outside of America in general, to get ice in your glass is like you gotta you, oh it's a huge deal yeah you, you gotta, gotta get like the, the un involved and shit yeah. <laughs> yeah and like they're like because they drink everything room temperature down to the down to the alcohol it's just like, yeah. like even like the beer they drink room temp like i mean i was i i don't know if that's changed because i know a lot of shit like a lot of like diet stuff is americanized beer. I think they drink beer cold in a lot of places, but yeah. very little else. Yeah, like, like I remember, like yeah, Coca Cola. You go to a restaurant, they pour you a glass of Coke, and it was just room temperature. And the Germans would always come to work. It would always be German workers that would come to work on our like uh, military housing stuff. So you put in a, a service call, they'd come. My grandma would serve them Coke with ice in it, and they would just go, "Oh, cold, cold," which means cold. <laughs> and they were like, they <laughs> loved it. <laughs> those, they those... like okay, they liked it. They were yeah. like, "What is this magic?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were into it. Yeah, we blew those primitive Germans' minds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i love a nice cold yeah. glass of water i don't i don't know what's going on in europe where yeah. they, they're not into it i remember when i was at my brokest times on my days off like i would just have nothing in my house so i was just i i was always blunt roaches in tap water <laughs> i was just like i'd break open my roaches i'd smoke i'd get my little cotton mouth going i'd just get a big glass of ice water and like I'd just drink ice tap water and watch tv Ooh. knowing i'd have any money to leave the house <laughs> lean time baby. yeah 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 so uh, this guy, uh, opposite of Lean Times, he, and this, he does this in like every industry he gets into, he starts buying up all his competitors. Smart. That's like the first thing he does. So he, um, like at the time, so like there was a lot of ice in Maine and there was a lot of ice from the Hudson River. And apparently the Hudson River, that area where they did the ice had a few warmer winters. Maine is like always cold, yeah. especially then. Um, so he started selling to the Hudson River Company so that they could keep their contracts. So uh, he would sell ice to them as like a and and make them like a middleman. But a lot of times, instead of um, getting paid in money, he would ask to be paid in their stock, and then he would eventually just, just take them over. Own the co shit, man. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like eventually, when they couldn't pay their debts, he would just take them over. So. Uh, he ended up uh, by the end of the 19th century, so like uh, you know, 10 years after he got into the game, um, he had consolidated all of the ice companies on the Eastern Seaboard into one company that was worth in I think this is in that that time's money yeah. it was worth 60 million dollars. Wow, so, that's got yeah, it's got to be like quarter billion today. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's insane. I mean. If you control all the ice, like I'm paying you, I need some yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just said, ice cold water. Yeah, I can't. I can't go without it. I can't. Now, that's whenever I look at stuff in the past, all I think about is just like how hot they were like, all the time. Yeah. Like this, they're like yeah, like you will see those like photos where it's like men from like the 50s and they're all in suits. And it's like, man, what's to stop you from dressing like this? Like, cause I, I, I don't want to sweat. You know, what I'm saying? I don't want to. Yeah. Sweaty well, cotton also, suit. Like, all of our all of our clothes are made out of plastic now. Yeah, so, like, yeah, They're yeah. all way sweatier. They were wearing like nice loose weaves and stuff. But yeah, solid. You're point. right. Like, but but also like you're right in the sense that like uh, we've always had fire. Like you can always get. Yeah. Warm, <laughs> you know, you can't without modern technology. You kind of 
can only get so cooled off. Yeah. Like, unless you're like next to a, a beautiful bubbling stream or something. Yeah. There's really only so much you can do. Oh man. I, I, AC is invented. Yeah. I love we it's cold right now in, in the mornings more or less when I get to work. But I the floor that I work in is like vacuum sealed and this huge like plastic wrap, which is insane because it's several football fields big and it's all cool, mm-hmm. crisp morning air. And the minute you walk in there, it just like it's hot, it's stagnant, it's cool. still, and it just cool. sucks. Like I I want to work outside just until the summer, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Uh well yeah, like that's I mean, that's how it was in the summer in New York. They didn't have refrigeration, they didn't have AC. So they were getting real sweaty, and that's why they were paying this guy sixty million dollars uh, for ice. Totally understandable. So he becomes like a kingpin in this world. He controls all the ice in New York City, which again is twenty five percent of the ice in the country. And uh, he decides he needs to be even more of a player. So he gets with the perennial character in our historical stories about New York City, Tammany Hall, baby. Day, he Tammany gets Hall. All up in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where every you're doing some crooked dealings in New York City around this time. Yeah, yeah, that's where you're going. It's gonna wind up there. Yeah, it's it's like the the Alistair Crowley in the occult world. How just he just falls into everyone's story. Like, yeah, it's it's, Mm -hmm. yeah Tammany Hall scamming in the 1800s. Yeah, you're 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 you're, you're crossing paths. Exactly. So he uh, gets sort of gets in with these Tammany Hall people. He works with the the mayor of New York City at the time, Robert Van Wick, uh, to manipulate the market so he basically brings them in as like partners and then tammany hall at the time controlled the docks so all the dock workers were like tammany hall subjects oh yeah basically ruled over this thing so he basically bribed them with investments in this business to basically turn away all the other ice (laughs) <laughs> so only he he took this monopoly and then he made it so no one could even compete with him at all yeah and uh, also like if there was more ice coming in they'd probably lower the cost of ice ex- well yeah, exactly he yeah totally yeah totally manipulated that's what, the yeah market. that's uh, he, that's, uh, that's messed up and also like uh like you know like like uh we had that one story where like the union guys busted out the non-union window glass or whatever mm-hmm. i was like bro if this ain't my ice i will have my boys come over there and melt that shit it's going they're like rubbing yep. their hands on it like, <laughs> <laughs> that's putting six, blankets all around yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah 60 million uh in today's terms is 2.2 billion 2.2 billion dollars god damn shit i don't know i don't know if again like that might not be in that might not be in 1890s money but it I, sounds I it like it sounds like it is man because i mean like like that's all the ice that's all the that's ice yeah what else are they gonna valuable. do yeah yeah they gotta drink their fucking their their jet fuel cocktails you know say <laughs> whatever the hell they like they're they're, they're nine right. yeah 99 percent alcohol cocktails they're drinking right they're strict nine yeah, yeah. Nice and cold <laughs> My morphine um, is room temp. I can't drink this. You know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, he he basically was, yeah, the, the kingpin of ice. So uh, he had these ice workers at the docks. They apparently were just worked to death, basically. He just exploited them. Uh, he, in 1900, which apparently was a particularly hot summer, he uh, tripled the price of ice. <laughs> Uh, he claimed there were shortages. Not true. <laughs> no, Maybe there's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, Maine's he, really hot right now. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he also, um, he. This is like so shitty. If you're selling ice, he like he had all these like ice delivery people, right? And they would he would not factor in the fact that ice was melting in the summer while they were delivering it. So like, uh, they would lose money. Yeah. Because he wasn't like letting them, you know, factor in a fraction of of melt or whatever. Jesus. So Christ. yeah, it's like you're selling a completely. What you're basically selling is like time. Like yeah, yeah. You're, you're selling ice. <laughs> yeah. Because it's only like it only exists for a certain period of time under a certain period of conditions, and then yeah. it's water, and it's not as valuable. Not yet, yeah, dude. Yeah, he says like a little <laughs> truck. It's just like ice truck, but when it melts, it's flipping out. Water truck. <laughs> water <laughs> truck. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Damn, that sucks too. Yeah, you put it in an order of ice. You know, it's it's a long day. You're at the end of the, you know, you you keep checking the update in the app. You're like, where's my ice? And it's like, oh, it's out for delivery. And then it gets there. And it's just like a puddle with like a little water, a yeah. little cube in there. And then now your <laughs> nine kids are fighting over the cube, and it's just like. <laughs> well, the the Meander Main article points out too that like this is especially shitty because at this time, 
like there is stuff you have to keep cold like oh yeah it wasn't just pleasure food, it wasn't just cocktails right like food milk medicine like there are certain things that need to be cold so if you're pricing people out of having ice that's like it it makes everything else so much harder because it's like well then you have to buy milk every day you have to yeah. like get food every day like uh it really sucks it, it sucks the most for poor people so yeah you know, as, as most things changed do. yeah <laughs> 125 years also what's fucked up is like like I, I i went tubing in san marcus one time and on the drive back i was talking to the guy i was like so how much do y'all pay to like have access to the river he's like you don't pay for access to the river man it's the river it's you just have it it's like the it's ice free. is up there in maine it's just like I mean, you know, like you could defend him, like, well, he's sending the guys there to pick it up and break it, but it's still, it's like he's not farming this shit, you know? <laughs> it's just, it's right, just there. It's right. naturally occurring. It's a natural resource yeah. that you're just sort of stealing. It's yeah. not, there's no overhead cost to it in that way. Yeah. yeah. That's that. <laughs> you know, like, like little replant trees, like logging industry and stuff. I wonder if he's out there just like mm -hmm. dumping barrels of water out in like the fall. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Or I get you, I bet you could do that. You could just fill up. Fucking, yeah, I, I'm over here thinking he's like breaking ice away from like river sides. He's probably just putting water in containers and leaving it outside. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it is they're cutting it out of the river, but I'm I'm not sure. Well, I uh, guess you have you saying it's river ice, but then again, I'm sure he's saying a lot of shit. <laughs> but it could be. Well, it's like it could be river ice from the river that he's freezing in yeah. manageable cubes. That probably is what it is. I have I have no idea. I just know it's from this river, and they bring it down. Uh, yeah. And they sell it in New York. The only thing I know so, about ice is that it comes twelve a pop out of my freezer, and then I forget to fill the tray. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then and I never have ice again. And I just and I'm like, oh shit, I should fill those up. That I feel like that is like two different types of people. Uh, if you got your, if you like always have ice or you never have ice. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I've definitely like gone to someone's house and put ice in a glass and I taste it and I'm like, this ice has been in there for years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is not, you do not use ice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a mini could fridge. Could it be me? Yeah. Yeah. It could, it be, could me. be me. I have a mini fridge and I keep full of HEB brand sparkling water. <laughs> and so nice. when I ride into cold water, it's right there. But the occasion where I do need ice, my roommate's not a nice guy. <laughs> He's like, mm -hmm. like I have to fill them up. And if I use them, they're just empty. Yeah. 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 Um, well, uh, this guy, uh, he, uh, you know, is, is making money hand over fist. Um, but then because this was so shitty for like milk and medicine and things like that, the press sort of turns on him okay. and uh, starts writing about him in the in the newspaper. And the people who are against Tammany Hall also sort of get in on this fight as like a proxy to corruption and stuff. And they reveal all of these like backroom dealings that this guy has had. And they basically set up the mayor of New York to take the fall. And he is voted out principally yeah. because of this. Like that's how big of a deal this was. So yeah, he uh we just set him up and it's got like Mary and Barry vibes. <laughs> he's just like <laughs> on like in a hotel room and like, putting ice in a glass <laughs> and he's just like, Yeah, yeah, oh that bitch set me up. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. yeah. He got reelected. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mary and Barry got reelected. This guy didn't. Yeah. Don't worry though, he still got to keep all of his ice profits oh, thank and he God. just moved to Europe. So yeah. he had a, he had an okay time. He was doing fine. Um but unfortunately for Charlie Morse, this is right around the time that refrigeration becomes uh, sort of accessible to people. Uh, like okay. Electric refrigeration starts to be, uh, you know, is, is is getting more popular. So that makes ice a much less valuable commodity yeah, as more and more people get refrigerated. Dis they're disrupting you know? the cooling industry. <laughs> like, yeah. He got Ubered. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, at this time, it's it's not necessarily, I sort of misspoke, it's not necessarily that people have refrigerators, but electric refrigeration exists, and so ice is made that way. Oh, so yeah, So it's a lot yeah, cheaper yeah. to do that yeah. than it is to bring it from a cold place down to a warm place. You just make it, you know, in the places that have uh, electric refrigeration. It's insane to think that was just how you had to get ice. You just had to go bring it from a cold yeah. place to a warm place. It's like, it makes sense, but it's just like, shit, man. <laughs> like, it's crazy I, yeah it's yeah. so weird to think about i would have died it's even weird to think about just ice being delivered to you it's like yeah. it's water i can make it like, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i got the recipe man on sixth street they got work. one in uh across from the vulcan it used to be an ice house where they would just ship ice out 
Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah, right here on Sixth Street. Oh damn, man! This wow. uh, more than anything, this episode is making me want to drink a beer. <laughs> we keep saying Ice House. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he he sort of sees the end of this business, but don't worry, Charlie Morris is a resourceful guy. Yeah, you know? you, yeah, you don't walk around looking like the Monopoly guy if you ain't got a few fucking get out of jail free cards, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he just because he has a monopoly on this whole thing. He owns a bunch of steamships because that's how he was bringing the ice down. Yeah. So he just basically switches to steamship companies from ice companies and he starts go. buying up all these steamship companies. So he really gets out at the right time and he eventually, uh, first, he monopolizes the entire Hudson River route. So he owns like all the steamships going back and forth on there. Um, then he gets into long distance shipping lanes between New York City and Cuba and New York City and Puerto Rico. Again, this guy is like a visionary because yeah. that's like th- th- a, p- a bunch of people start moving from those places like pretty soon after that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So the Great Migration and shit. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. oh, no, so, I thought it was just part of the Great Migration. But yeah, that's it's insane. Like, uh, I, I've been listening to this podcast about maritime law. Uh, just because mm-hmm. I've just gone full old man. And uh, like, yeah, I was just like, fuck it, let's lean into it. But yeah, like, and so much of it deals with shipping companies and like it really is that's like if you want that like that generational wealth that's like one of the not only the few places left to do it but it's like yeah if you own shipping containers because like that's the entire world runs on getting things from one thing to another and it's still naval it's still sea sea travel and that is uh yeah, yeah he's definitely that's the way to go that's that's that, that's the industry yeah so uh he obviously gets extremely rich from this so then he does what uh every person who gets like richer than god does <laughs> he gets into banking so he becomes yeah, yeah, just <laughs> let's get my money making money you know? yeah, yeah so he ends up controlling multiple new york city banks he's like one of the richest people in the city and all these businesses help each other because he's doing shady shit with them yeah so basically the meander main article says he would first buy a controlling interest in a bank and promptly borrow money from it with the borrowed money, he would then buy stock in a steamship company. The bank, which he controlled, would hold the steamship stock as collateral for the loan. Morse then controlled the steamship company. So it's just <laughs> a fucking circle. <laughs> this is like those video. You know, those. there's a really funny TikTok, uh, Twitter account called TikTok Investors. And it just shows people giving the most psycho financial oh advice yeah, that, yeah like, where it's like start an llc price. cash out the yeah. llc take the, the yeah thing like that where it's like dude, you're gonna pay go to jail as a contractor from your own llc and then use that money to pay off your credit card like just yeah. all this shit yeah, 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 yeah. so bad <laughs> i like to call that the lie cheat and steal content farm that's what i like to call it. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like our, our wwe has like nxt <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, like that's where we're just like new up-and-comers in the scam game get started out of out of that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it really like it's so weird because it is like obviously if you do the tiktok version of this you like go to jail but this is like rich people do shit like this all the yeah time, oh yeah yeah you know? yeah that's that man they they just this go to the circular, bank you know yeah uh, and then it's it's so crazy like they obviously they still have ways to do this but like this clearly like leg- legislation was passed to like curtail this behavior like like yeah I mean, shortly like, after this is pre this is pre like monopoly laws, yeah before they like broke up like know? u.s standard or standard oil or whatever like this yeah. yeah but it's wild that like we had to fight to, to make this illegal because it just seems like anyone would be like yeah you can't do that man but you like do that. the people whose job is to, to say that. yeah the people whose job is to say you can't do that are on his fucking ice truck on the hudson they're all just, doing it yeah 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 yeah, from it. yeah just Do finding it. their way through some lady's giant dress you know they're, they're just having a great time <laughs> on a steamship on the hudson you know <laughs> they didn't care so <laughs> so uh yeah this guy he becomes like very integrated into the new york city elite and uh he meets this guy named f augustus hines who uh was in mining he worked in copper mining and uh, he had like a background in this. And then in 1902 with uh, Charlie Morse, he forms the United Copper Company. So I really like can't stress enough how quickly this all happened. Like, yeah, this sounds like someone's life story. In 1900. Yeah. Like from like 1900 to 1902, he went from ice king to steamship king to banker to copper Shit. company. <laughs> 
crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. I've also had five jobs in two years, and it was like, it was, uh, it was not like a, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a way different experience. <laughs> <laughs> so then a little bit of time goes by. This, this part of the story happens in 1907. Um, the uh Heinz and his brother who like co-own this company um they along with Morse uh devised this plan to they thought people were shorting United Copper they thought people were trying to short their company oh no so they are like we're gonna buy a bunch of stock and drive the price up which is what's called a short squeeze yeah. which is like basically what they do with GameStop and stuff yeah like yeah that. so they're trying to force a short squeeze um but it fails. It doesn't work. They uh, didn't realize how much of the stock they didn't control. So it eventually gets exposed that this happens. And uh, again, bad press. The company basically collapses. People pull their money out because uh, the owners were trying to fuck the investors. So they're yeah. like, you know, we're not we're not going to do this. Um, and Morse is implicated in this. And uh, the bank that he owns, that the copper company was banking with, collapses. So it's the Knickerbocker Trust Company. Knickerbocker is like a really common street name and stuff up here. And it's so silly. And I don't yeah. know what it's named <laughs> for, but anyway. I always think of like goofy pants. That's what, what always pops yeah. into my head. Yeah. <laughs> it must be Dutch. Like most of the silly names around here are Dutch. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, that's the, the, the goofiest language. Yeah. <laughs> did you have that? Tw did you see that tweet that was like, we have an uh, ein serious problem? And it's like Dutch and oh. it's spelled... <laughs> It's spelled like someone making fun of how Dutch is almost English, but not quite. Yeah, but like, it's just legitimately it's, how it's spelled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like someone talking, speaking English in a Dutch accent. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there was something about like, it, it, it's, a, it's a ludicrous sentence. Like I, I slammed my dick in a car door or something, something to that effect. And it's just like, it's like, I've done hit my flinkle stopper in a dingle dang. And it's just, but it's like, there's enough yeah. English words to where it just sounds like the nouns are made up. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a fun language. Well, that's, I'm sure. Cause you were in Germany, you know, the, um, the famous German one, which is, it looks like it says we're sucking dick and it means we're looking for you. Oh. <laughs> be like wait, wait y'all looking at me i'm looking for y'all you know what I'm <laughs> yeah 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 drop a pen let's do this dude. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway the knickerbocker trust company collapses and uh you know it people like this triggers like a whole panic it causes a huge problem the stock market crashes because of this. Like it's this chain reaction of shit that Charlie Morris is like implicated in the sort of early stages. <laughs> He's of doing it. the Monopoly guy turning his pockets inside out. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's like this huge chain reaction problem. And uh, J.P. Morgan, the man. At yeah, this yeah. point, it's like all these things that are now like institutions. It was yeah. like that guy was around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JP Morgan, the human being, yeah, yeah. bailed out the stock market. Damn. Like that's how that happened. Yeah. That is, yeah, that's all like the OGs, JP Morgan, Dr. Pepper. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, yeah. Like, <laughs> They're around. Yeah, those used to they be real men. <laughs> yeah. So um this is like, you know, this ends in disgrace <sighs> for these guys. Um and Morris uh, is forced to like sell his steamship lines. He's humiliated, and uh, the press wants to make an example out of him. The judiciary wants to make an example out of him. So he uh, is convicted of violations of federal banking laws. He uh, flees for a while, and uh, he is eventually found guilty and sentenced to uh, 15 years in the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. So wow. they get him back. That's um, wild. That feels like 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 that, that, I guess back then maybe there was less federal penitentiary federal penitentiaries, but that just seems like it's like he got convicted in New York and jailed in Atlanta. That, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't quite know why that is. It, it might just be that they're like he he's in too many people's pockets. Yeah, here. yeah, like, yeah. You got to get him out. You get him out of the city. He's just like man, he's like Atlanta. Can I bring some ice? Because <laughs> it's fucking yeah. hot down there. Dude. <laughs> well, th this like this we still got more to go. Like Hell some yeah. crazy shit happens. So. <laughs> He, like, holds a press conference when he's about to go to jail. So, like, he's out on bail, whatever. They, they convict him, and he's, like, getting ready to go to jail. And he gives a press conference where he's crying, and he says this <laughs> is the most brutal sentence ever pronounced against a citizen in a civilized country. 
<laughs> he Hell says, yeah. this is an example of a government gone wild for a victim. He, he says he's a scapegoat. And like, he was just doing businessman shit. He yeah, was just doing yeah. businessman shit. He accuses the jury of being drunk. He like <laughs> goes in. Like this is I this to me is like Donald Trump shit. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Very unfair. Yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah, that yeah. kind of shit. You got a dog Completely. wife. You got a dog wife, Dad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but everything yeah. that you say that he's doing, I'm just imagining a a, a chance card for Monopoly where it was like yeah. kicked out of the public speakers <laughs> association or whatever. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um after he's convicted again, his his uh, steamship company was sold at foreclosure. Um, but because he is so well connected, somebody bought it at foreclosure, and then three days later, the company gets reincorporated with him as president. So <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got people bitches. on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Uh, so I've, I, I've got. It's got a. Uh, thinking about the 2024 election. I'm like, I hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> 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 So uh, in Atlanta, this is crazy too. Just, just like so many things. So in Atlanta, uh, his cellmate was Carlo Ponzi of the Ponzi scheme. <gasps> wow! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two of, two of America's was... most wanted in the same motherfucking place at the same motherfucking yeah, time. <laughs> that's a gangster that's like, party. The thing that's so crazy about it is this is pre Ponzi scheme Ponzi. So. He was in jail because he was um, doing. He was like a coyote for Italians. He was like yeah. smuggling Italians into the U.S. <laughs> coyote for Italians just <laughs> uh, that sounds like aggravated coyoteing. They're like, <laughs> and you get an aggravated charge because they you were bringing Italians in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's what he was doing. So <laughs> just making him shave the mustache. He was like, just, yeah, you'll be good. Just <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, According to this, and again, this is sort of like the Monopoly Man thing. I found this written a lot of places. It seems like a tall tale, but who knows? Um, according to the, a lot of the things I've read, Morris kind of taught Ponzi his ways. Like he was like a, a mentor to this yeah. guy. Who then went on to do the Ponzi the scheme. Ponzi the scheme. Ponzi yeah, scheme, yeah, yeah. Again, J.P. Morgan, the guy... Ponzi, the guy, yeah. they're all around. Guys, you know? so we we Ponzi, we I talk, I mentioned our show Bible before that one little piece of paper like when we first started the podcast mm -hmm. where I wrote like a million different ideas on it. Somewhere on there is Charles Ponzi. We haven't done Ponzi yet. I feel like everybody's done Ponzi. It's out there. But if you would like yeah. to hear a lot cheat and steal take on Ponzi, uh, comment down below. Also, please yeah. comment on all of our shit that helps us out. <laughs> like just even if it's yeah, just like do. hey, yeah, comment. Let us know if a Ponzi episode would be fun or if you've heard it already. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, so uh, Charlie Morris, again, super politically connected guy, right? So he, while he's in prison, is trying to get a presidential pardon. That's his, like, way out. You yeah. Know? Like any any self-respecting billionaire. Would yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the president at the time is Taft, and he, uh, Morris hires this, uh, like, well-connected sort of political lobbying lawyer guy named Harry Doherty um to pressure taft yeah. and i'm saying that because this 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 guy comes back later yeah, so put enough pressure on taft to go through the fucking floorboards i'll tell you that right. anyway, yeah. <laughs> what better target for an ice magnate than our sweatiest president <laughs> right exactly <laughs> gotta cool him off for sure. yeah, yeah that dude he's like mom sorry this man sells what now he's all yeah yeah bring, bring him <laughs> in I'll, I'll talk to this guy so taft like for a couple years taft is like no i'm not gonna pardon him i'm not gonna pardon him i'm not gonna pardon him then Charlie Morse starts getting sick. Um, he, according to uh, Meander Maine, he was showing signs of something called Bright's disease, which is a kidney disease. Ooh. And so he's trying to get a pardon on those grounds. He's like, look, I'm sick. I only got a couple years left. Yeah. Let me out. Eventually, Taft is like, fine, you're sick. You're going to die soon. We'll let you out. I got so a he feeling. gets out in 1912. And he goes, uh, he goes to Europe for a little bit to like, you know, take the waters or whatever yeah, like yeah. <laughs> people did back then. And then he comes back to his hometown of Bath, Maine, and he is completely healthy. He is totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> he apparently, while he was in in prison, was fooling all of these doctors by eating soap chips and like chemicals <laughs> that would make him sick so that they would think he had this problem. 
And then as soon as he stopped eating soap, he's done. <laughs> no, I eat soap all the time. <laughs> Man, I'll just imagine him coming back to America, whatever he's doing the Charleston. He's like, ha ha ha. Like this. <laughs> you dumb motherfuckers. Ha <laughs> ha Yeah. Just, yeah. Just tap wow. dance back in. And it's like, you can't like unpardon him. Yeah. Like, you did, you did it. <laughs> Taft, you yeah. fat, ignorant moron. How could you? <laughs> <laughs> I bet he was like, man, I got to think about this. I got to take a bath. <laughs> he like went, that's, yeah. when he, that's when he got stuck in the tub. <laughs> that's, man, that's crazy. That's like, I, I was, when you were saying he got sick, I was just like, I love you, Philip Morris. That's what I was thinking of where he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah things yeah. having, mm -hmm. eating soap chips. Yep. That, and man, that's so There's tight. more. Yeah. There is more. <laughs> he has another, once he's, because once he's out, He's healthy again. Yeah. He is back to business. He is <laughs> scheming, wheeling, and dealing. Yeah. He is going to go for it again. He so, passed go. He collected $200. He's ready absolutely. for the next round. Let's go. <laughs> yep. So uh, he, like, again, he had um, this, like, steamship company still. He was still the president of it when he was in jail. So when he's out, he can, like, control that steamship company again. And this is right around the time that World War II is starting. And so what does any self-respecting piece of shit rich guy do? He starts getting government contracts to yep. do military stuff. Yep. So he gets contracts to build ships for the military. And uh, I we I, we've touched on military contracting grips before. I feel like that would be a great episode. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Yeah. Own. Yeah. Billions. Yeah. Of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, that means so, like he's in league at this point with like Prescott Bush. Is He's probably he's. Yeah, he's probably he's he's probably shot at an orphan's feet with Prescott yeah. Bush to get like to get a fun dance out of him. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. So he uses the steamship company and he gets the funds to build thirty six freighters uh, for you know the navy. And uh, by the time the war is over, he had given them. Why don't you guess how many of thirty six do you think he gave them? It is more than zero. I'm gonna say two. Dead on. He, uh. gave them two. <laughs> he gave them two, and they were wooden ships. He was supposed to build steel ships, and he gave them two wooden ships. <laughs> like, buddy, this is the 1940s, man. Like, we can't have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we can go back in time and win the Civil War again with these fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, so, uh, I. Who, who else? Um, our buddies, um, Titanic, no, Titanic, Titanic, Amarillo Slim. Was uh mm -hmm. was in World War Two. It's just funny to think about all the. This is World War One. Oh, World yeah. War One. Okay, then. Well, Titanic Thompson was, uh, I believe, was. Uh, he was in World War One. Well, yeah, he joined up during World War One, but they didn't send him over because he was too smart. You know, he's got to train people. Yeah. But it's just crazy to think <laughs> that like there was people who were like, "Oh shit, I got drafted. Let me go in." And, you know, and there was guys who were like, "Who World War Two was a boon for them?" You know, I mean, well, this guy's totally. this guy's a billionaire. Of course, he did well off war. Obviously, it's not like a statement, but. Right. I mean, yeah, billionaires tend to do very well with uh, with conflict. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, he delivered two wooden ships. Um, so in like after the war, he did build some more of them, like because he still had the contracts. They still wanted them. So he ended up building 22 out of 36. But they're like, yeah, that's not enough. You said 36. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he gets in trouble again. Uh, he. uh he uh gets uh convicted of ma our favorite mail fraud mail fraud um and uh you know and, and like failure to deliver he mis misappropriation of funds yeah like that kind of stuff because he apparently he used the money again just as sort of like all consuming need to like buy up everything own everything he used a lot of the money to um grow his shipbuilding yard so he would invest in like infrastructure yeah with the money he was supposed to be using for ships <laughs> so he gets in trouble with that, and he's like, "Don't worry about it. I got my, I got my, uh, my people on the inside. I'll yeah. just eat some soap chips and get out of here." You know? <laughs> but that guy I told you about before, who he enlisted to uh, help him get a pardon from Taft, yes, that guy Harry Do Harry Doherty, yeah. At this time, Harry Doherty is the Attorney General of of the new president, President Harding, yeah, and. It turns out that Charlie Morris had stiffed him years oh. and years ago when he was trying to get out of prison. Yeah, dude, you got to, man, the thing about paying off the cops is you got to pay them, dude. <laughs> like, like that's, that's you got to pay them. Yeah, that's a very integral part of the plan. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he like he thinks he's gonna get out of it, but Darty is like, "Fuck you, motherfucker!" Yeah, I'm throwing the book at you. Um, but he escapes again. He goes to Europe. He just pieces out to Europe, <laughs> like all these rich guys do in in this time period. That's what the mayor did with his ice profits. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's what they're all doing. Damn, that's um, that's that's just crazy. Because again, there's like even if there is an extradition treaty. I mean, we talk we talk about this all the time. At this point, you could move one town over, nobody who knew who you were, let alone right. an entire different continent. How are they even gonna find you? That's man. Yeah. That's, I I really don't know like whether he was living in anonymity or not. He so he eventually does go back to his hometown. He 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 ends up dying in Bath, Maine, in 1933. So like you know, ten years after all of this stuff happens. So at some point, he went back. Um, but and this is sort of the last thing I'm going to say, which is so funny to me. So this guy who's like just a total scammer criminal, um, he uh, when he was like sort of at his peak, he said he was going to open a school in his hometown and name it after his mother, um, you know, his phil- philanthropic efforts for his hometown. Um, and by the time the school opened, which was in 1904, it was actually named after him. <laughs> and there that school i mean not the same building but like that school is still named after him in bath maine even oh though wow a total, total criminal. yeah total so, scumbag <laughs> yeah charles morris high school in bath maine uh still exists still named for this guy your school is named for oh. fucking you go to ponzi high school yeah like, you yeah, go to yeah, Char- yeah 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 ponzi high school. if you so, if you've gone to Char- charlie morris high school uh, please drop to if you go to Charlie Morris High School, don't contact us. <laughs> but, like, but, yeah, but, but if you graduated, hit us up. Also, this is very funny. He's like, I'm gonna name it after my mother, Charlie Morris. I said, it me, me essentially. Yeah, I am just my, kidding. Yeah, she would have wanted me to name it after me. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, so uh so that's the story of uh Charlie Morris. Charlie Morris, so. Ice Kingpin. Worth it, totally worth it. Sounds like he had a blast. It's he had a really good time. I mean, yeah. it was probably pretty uncomfortable to eat soap chips, but yeah. other than that, <laughs> it's like uh, good, good, good is really good. Yeah, I stopped cussing. You know, <laughs> so like, yeah. a, yeah, I like <laughs> ate a bunch of soap, can't cuss. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> I we always we always comment on just what a wild time it was back then. But like, yeah, he was, this is playing with like the OGs. This is with you know the 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 JP Morgans, the Rockefellers, the Tammany Halls. This dude was like in the mix and possibly the. Uh, the the inspiration for the monopoly guy which is also crazy Um, it's just interesting that like he's because like all those other guys we've heard of i'd never heard of this guy yeah and like he was up there with all of them he was playing with the big boys yeah yeah yeah. yeah. straight out of maine just you know putting maine on the map that's insane now i don't think of maine i just think uh, that's my cousin and his wife go to pick blueberries every summer yep blueberry picking in maine yeah yeah Mm -hmm. dude lobster rolls yeah oh yeah dude I think I need to go to New England this summer. <laughs> I think I need to go visit the fam. Oh, man. I'm a fan. Yeah. So, well, the reason I started reading about this was because there's an eclipse on April 8th, and it goes, the primary path of the eclipse up here goes through northern New England, and it goes right over Mount Katahdin, which is like the biggest mountain in New England, I think. It's in, yeah. it's in this part of it's in this part of Maine. And I was like, I should try to go up there. That does sound, that does sound tight. Cool. Yeah. Man, anyway, that's uh I cheat and steal eclipse trip. We're going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we can reach five thousand on the Patreon. Uh no, <laughs> man, like that's that's such a cool story. I love the, the historical episodes that we've been doing and just like the audacity, like before like a lot of these rules were put into place, like I, I, ultimately these are bad dudes like profiting off the the pain and misery of people but there's just sure. something about like the idea that like even now if you want to do something this crazy like you I don't know you gotta like like take over like a niche industry or whatever these dudes were like shipping ice you know what I'm saying ice, just like yeah. yeah 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 just stuff like, like like we invented the color red you know like we're just gonna make a right. lot of money off that that's so fucking cool I love that thank you for telling us that story Kath yeah man Cool. Well, Thanks guys, for listening, everybody. yeah, guys, if you if you enjoyed that, like I said, you should check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash lie, cheat and steal. Uh, you get two more episodes a month. We got a crazy back catalog. It's been there for years. We've been putting episodes yeah, in we there. Have, I think over 100 now. Yeah, over 100. So, and we tons do of bonus episodes on there. 
Yeah, tons of bonus episodes and stuff that like 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 just uh, maybe a little too niche or weird or something that we may have already like touched on in the main feed, but it's still an interesting story. That but like it's like oh well, we did something like that. You can find all these like cool like uh, episodes. That I think we right up your alley, right in there. This month we did, as I said at the top of the episode, James Hogue, academic impersonator, got into Yale. Correct? Did he get Princeton? To Princeton got into Princeton uh, while running from the police. Totally lied on his application. It's a very cool story. And we also talked about the three-year cruise, uh, which is just an insane uh, modern scam that's uh, in the news today. So check that out, patreon.com slash lie, cheat, and steal. You can find us on TikTok and Instagram at lie, cheat, steal podcast. And we're on YouTube at uh, lie, cheat, and steal. Uh, look us up. Uh, you can find me on, I'm on Instagram. It's where to find me these days. It's at PZTX. That's P-E-E-Z-Y-T-X. And, uh, Awesome show's coming up. I don't know. Check it out. I always post my dates. Kath, you got anything for us? Yeah, follow me on social media. I'm at Kath Barbadoro on everything. I live in New York City and do shows around the New York area. I also have another podcast called What a Time to Be Alive. Comes out every week. We talk about stupid news stories. It's a lot of fun. So check that out. And thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah, guys, thanks for listening. I hope your March is off to a great start. I uh, hope you got to have a great spring. And I just hope you're having fun. Be safe. Be smart. But above all, don't get caught. Don't get caught. See you next time.